91 Chevy Silverado C1500. I did a bonehead move, didn't disconnect the battery when I was messing with the starter, and zapped something. Afterwards, nothing works. There's no lights anywhere. The key does nothing. So I've traced the second positive battery cable. It goes down along the engine and up to this junction block. And it's the thick red and black one on the far right. The only other things coming off of that post are this light and this light. I checked continuity and I've got nothing. So that tells me I have burned out a fusible link. Looks like the other ones are up near the junction block. This one's down here. So I hooked up this secondary wire. Don't try this at home. It's the wrong gauge. Hooked up the battery. Touched this wire to that post. And there's light. So that tells me that cable is bad. This helps the electron spin. Got to wrap it around the intake like that. And we're rolling. So it was that wire. Ah, feels good to be driving again after a week of nonsense. That was a not too difficult troubleshooting process. Moral of the story is to disconnect your negative battery cable before you work on your car. So I've proven that the green cable works well. I've actually driven it around a little bit now. I was trying not to, but needed my truck. Here is the solution to that issue. I didn't necessarily need the big cable, but the small cable has been pretty rough for a while now. It's all melty and crunchy and frayed. It runs right along the exhaust and up through a conduit that it rubs against. Never hurts to have a fresh cable though, so I'm just gonna replace the whole thing. This is what I should have done all along. Goodbye, repair. This is the zap that killed that wire. This is what being stupid and being in a rush does. I've had this ratchet since I was a kid. I don't think I'm gonna take the same routing on this cable. I wanna get it away from the engine heat. I'll pull it down through when I undo the starter. Yeah. I was just driving this thing, so everything's pretty hot, which makes it more exciting. I reshaped that P-clamp a little bit. Put the cable in it while I had it out, so it made it a little easier. Since the topic of this video is fusible links, look what we have there. That stretch of the wire is the fusible link. I replaced this wire just because. I could have just replaced that fusible link portion, but no. This main starter wire is actually pretty decent still, but it doesn't hurt to replace that after 30 years. So I just hooked up the main cable, nothing exciting there. Of course, now it's about to rain. I'm not going to route this cable along the exhaust and up through that conduit. We saw what happened in the last one. I'll find a convenient path along the outside somewhere. I just hooked up the other end of the battery cable. Need to solve this end. Of course. 
Of course it's going to be wrong. I hate crimp connectors, but this will be my semi-temporary, hopefully not permanent repair. Got it running under the battery tray. I'll zip tie to some stuff along the edge, going under the coolant tank, under the air compressor stuff that doesn't work. I'll zip tie it again to some more stuff and have it terminate up there. That keeps it basically entirely away from hot stuff during its whole run. I either need to find more real estate for the extra cable that I won't be using now that I have a shorter route, or I'll just clip it off. I think I'll just clip it off. No turning back now. Brand new wire, just bought it. Ouch, it hurts my soul. this one which also looks pretty damn clean this is what I meant when I said that the uh, first thing off the battery was the the lights and the engine bay that's what this is it's on that same post it's the only other thing on that post so that was a pretty clear indication that there was an issue we have continuity if I could thread this thing in all right, so to recap, replace the starter wire, rerouted the hot wire around up yonder. And we have continuity. All the tools are clear. Let's see if the truck starts. There's gonna be a clicking from my blend door gearbox, which is stripped out. But hey, it worked. Nice. So that's the extent of the troubleshoot and repair of the no start situation. Put this cover back on so I wouldn't lose these screws, uh, but eventually maybe some long and lonely cold winter night, I will uh, put a more permanent terminal on that wire instead of the crimp connection.